fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson, and today we need to break down the origins of one of the most dangerous experiments ever created by Jumba Jukiba, Leroy. How long was Leroy being developed? What experiment number is he? And why does Leroy look so much like Stitch? Well, Leroy's story actually goes back farther than I ever initially realized, and truly, he's the culmination of so many different Lilo and Stitch movies and episodes. And today's sponsor, Disney Collect, supports our passion for Disney animation and all of Lilo and Stitch's experiments. You see, the Disney Collect app allows you to get virtual cards of all of your favorite characters, including the heroes from Lilo and Stitch. With the cards you open from packs, missions, and their arcade, you can work to complete sets, craft them into rare cards, and even trade them with friends you have connected with in the app or other fans from around the world. Lilo collected pictures of Stitch's cousins, and you can begin collecting your own sets of Disney digital cards today by downloading the app through my link below. And once you're all set up, you can follow me just like all of my social accounts by searching Isaac Carlson. Now, before Jumbo was arrested by the Galactic Federation, he was working for Galaxy Defense Industries and was receiving funding by the nefarious Dr. Jacques von Hamsterville. Now, of course, just before he was detained, he was putting the finishing touches on Experiment 626. That creature would also be imprisoned and brought before the Grand Councilwoman as evidence to prove Jumbo was illegally conducting genetic experimentation. But the experiment that became Leroy was able to be completed soon after Jumbo was allowed to return to his lab after spending years on Earth, and if he had actually started creating that creature from scratch when he arrived to his lab again, he admitted it would have taken him years to get anywhere close to completing a new experiment. Jumba makes genius experiments, not fast food would take years just to create design. What this seems to indicate, which I was completely oblivious to for so long, is the fact that Jumba must have hidden an unfinished experiment within his lab so well that the authorities were unable to find it during their raid of his laboratory. The experiment that would one day become Leroy was hidden from the police and remained dormant in deep space for years as Jumba discovered a family of his own. But even though Jumba had helped rehabilitate 626 of his other experiments, when he arrived arrived at his lab, he continued to develop the abomination he had begun all of those years ago in hopes of creating the ultimate weapon. You see, Jumbo wasn't interested initially at creating a new life for himself and his experiments. He was in pursuit of building a creature that would be unstoppable, but he had continuously failed. The Jumbo's first creation, Experiment Zero, was extremely destructive, but he was also uncontrollable to the point where he had to lock him away on a deserted ice planet. Then Experiment 262, aka Ace, was made too good. He's the Captain America of Jumba's experiments. And others like Experiment 600 were clumsy. 625 was lazy and obsessed over sandwiches. And 626 grew to desire meaning in his life, which led to him finding an Ohana. Plus, all the experiments that came in between all of those failed experiments had inherited an ability to turn good. All of Jumba's experiments through to Stitch could find the one true place where they belonged, but Jumba was not satisfied with that reality as we got to see in Stitch the movie. Once experiment is turned to good, is completely useless for bad. I'm trying to fix for 627. <laughs> but while Leroy was a follow-up to Stitch, he wasn't Jumba's first iteration on Stitch's design. Before Leroy, Jumba admitted that he was in development of Experiment 627 for years. He put a lot of effort in that attempt to create his ultimate monstrosity, including granting 627 a variety of new powers from over 20 other experiments. And he also perfected 627's inability to be deterred from his evil programming. There was now no way to turn new experiments good, but 627 still had a weakness. While Jumba did enhance every part of 627 compared to Stitch. That also meant 627's sense of humor became a little too big, leaving the experiment completely defenseless when he was in a fit of laughter. Still determined to unlock the perfect experiment though, Jumba quickly did create another creature, Experiment 628. But all we know for sure is that the 628 experiment pod exists according to the series. So much for Experiment 627. Perhaps I will have better luck next 
Aye. Now, personally, I think 628 may be Jumba's most evil creation, even compared to Leroy, because 628 was the last experiment Jumba created without any oversight. It's the experiment that was designed to directly address the downfall of 627, and assuming he had already discovered how to create a purely obedient monster, then 628 would be a pure evil, relentless destroyer who would only be a servant to Jumba himself. But we don't know for sure, so the mysteries and powers that exist within that pod may never be uncovered, especially since Leroy was not a true successor to 628. You see, while Jumbo was working on his 629th experiment, Hamsterveel took over the operation by force and rushed the completion of the experiment so that he could build an army. Fun fact, even though Leroy is Jumbo's 629th experiment, he was actually not called that officially until June of 2020 when an advertisement for the manga Stitch and the Samurai showcased an experiment they called Prototype 629, Leroy. So that whole continuity of 627 and 628 existing before Leroy and Stitch is now fully acknowledged, at least in Japan. Now, it's important to note that when Hamsterville commissioned Leroy, he was completely unaware of the creation of 627 and 628, as those experiments were built without his knowledge while he was in prison. Gantu and 625 never told him Jumba had built any new experiments, so instead of forcing Jumba to iterate on 627 and 628's designs, he requested that his experiment should iterate on Stitch. I want to order a new version of 6 to 6. Easy on the fluffy. And I don't like blue. So make him resplendent red to match my cape. That's why Leroy resembles Stitch so much and basically only has his powers. Leroy may have an increase of strength and speed, the ability to grow and change the color of his fur, and a resistance from turning good, but otherwise he's Experiment 626. Jumbo only gave Hamsterville exactly what he asked for and nothing more, especially since he was the one who got Jumbo arrested in the first place. You can even see how closely connected Leroy and Stitch are through the fact that they both pick their noses with their tongues. They share the same genetics and instincts Instincts, which technically means Leroy is a less advanced experiment compared to 627 and 628. Again, supporting the fact that I think 628 would be the most dangerous experiment if it was ever hydrated. Maybe if 629's creation wouldn't have been sped up and dictated by Hamsterville, that alien could have reached new diabolical heights. Jumba just never got that opportunity. But let me know in the comments whether you think 628 or Leroy was more powerful. But regardless, Hamsterville's intervention and a mistake by Jumba left Leroy with a weakness that was very similar to something Stitch had to experience. Errors in the creation of Leroy and Stitch led them both to suffering from glitches. If you remember from Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch. The result of Stitch's cells not being fully energized when he first came to life meant that over time he began to break down. His eyes would glow green, he'd lose control of his body, and he began to approach death. And a similar reaction was able to be brought out of Leroy because of the song Aloha Oi. Circuits will burn themselves out like supernova! Somehow, playing Aloha Oi when Leroy was initially formed and charged meant that his mind and body could be disrupted just like Stitch, only while Stitch's glitches were completely uncontrollable and were eventually healed. It seems Leroy's glitches were completely controllable and there was likely no cure. Hawaiian folksy folk music is tied into Synapse Matrix. If Leroy is hearing Aloha Oi, he is shutting down like a car wash in a rainstorm. But before the glitch could ever be recognized by even Jumbo, by himself, Hamsterville went ahead and cloned thousands of copies of Leroy, which I found extremely fascinating since one of Jumba's experiments, 344 aka Dupe, was unable to identically copy individuals. The clones would only be given a portion of the original's power, leaving the collection of clones much weaker than the original, but it seems Jumba was eventually able to perfect the cloning process through a machine he built, and with that cloning device, Hamsterville had the opportunity to amass a perfect, unlimited, obedient army of Leroy's. At that point, it seemed like the Galactic Federation would fall, that the universe would soon bend to Dr. Jacques von Hamsterville, and that even Jumba's previous experiments were no match for Leroy's might. 
But Leroy was not prepared for the power of Elvis Presley, and because of that, 629 unfortunately had to discover that the one true place where he belonged was locked away in a cell in an alien high-security prison. Honestly, I kind of feel bad for Leroy because he didn't ask to be created evil. He just was. But do you think his fate is fair? What do you think Leroy could have been without Hamsterville's intervention? And do you hope we'll ever see Leroy again? Let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing for more magical videos. And of course, have a magical day.